Hi everyone, welcome to week two. I hope that uh, you're finding things okay in the course. I hope things are working uh, and uh, you're having a good time so far. Um, I, I think this is a great group of people and I'm really impressed with what I'm reading so far. It is now Monday of uh, week two. I'm a little behind in putting this video up. Unfortunately, my MacBook died last week I haven't backed up in some time, so I have been spending a whole lot of time rebuilding and uh, recreating things. So bear with me a little bit. Uh, we'll get it rolling uh, pretty quick. Anyway, um, week two is up, and I want to walk you through some of what's going on um, and probably try to give you a little bit of guidance to make things easier. So let's take a look, and uh, I'll try to keep this pretty tight. But uh, we'll see what we can do. So um, week two, and again, uh, we have this get started page. Um, we start off with uh, what I'm calling kind of a deep dive. So we took, uh, we read the NCTE's professional knowledge for the teaching or writing, kind of the policy statement last week. And I give you a link to um, what I think is a pretty good um, series of blog posts about that uh, that document. And they're kind of broken down by topic. Writing's a process, a tool for thinking. And with each one, um, this writer has come up with some links, uh, some good ideas even right in here. And you're unfortunately going to find that some of these links are blocked by a paywall for NCTE members. Here's a lucky one. You actually got to read something by Ralph Fletcher. Um, so if you do find that you've picked a topic and you uh, are blocked by a paywall, um, I'm going to ask you to do a little kind of researching on your own and uh, figure out some other ways of talking about this. I've tried to describe this as a deep dive or as, uh, imagine if we're all on campus in Orono and I, I pull out these papers, these documents, these websites, and I say, okay, we've got a three hour class. Let's take about an hour hour and a half, something like that. Go away with your computer, go explore this topic, figure it out for us from your perspective as a teacher, how it looks in your classroom, how it ought to look in our classrooms. What are the challenges? What are the successes? What does this topic offer to me as a teacher of writing? Go away, go find a place, a coffee, hang out, and come back in about an hour and a half and the floor is yours for about five to seven minutes. Just share everything you have. Tell us about this. That's essentially what we're doing. We're just doing it in an online learning experience. So very much like an upper level grad course round table, which is exactly what this is. That's what we're doing here. Okay. You can uh, share your findings by writing. You can uh, create a video, just simply use, you know, Make it easy, right? Just use your phone, turn it to uh, video and record, um, and then upload that to, Bright, to Brightspace or put it on YouTube and put the link in. Uh, Brightspace has this cool video note feature, but it only lets you make a video for 30 seconds, so kind of, kind of a drag with that. But anyway, you're kind of going to be the person like sharing out on this. We will have some duplicates, um, and that's okay. We come from this to this from different grade levels and perspectives. Uh, but I'd like to share it out a little bit. So um, let's, uh, let's enjoy diving in and kind of uh, sharing and seeing what we find. So that's kind of the first big thing. The second thing is working on this project, Stories and Beliefs. And I kind of... Uh, you know, years ago, this used to be uh, This I Believe, but that, that's kind of been worked into some other courses, and so I kind of let that pass, but I think that there's huge value in telling stories and in creative nonfiction. Um, and I'm going to put that word creative in quote marks because I think that it can be really intimidating to say, let's write something creative. So I sat down yesterday morning thought about the photography work I'm doing and uh, what kind of story comes out of it and realized that, you know, I would go to Portland or uh, Boston or New York and take photos of people all the time. 
And when the pandemic came, that became kind of scarier. And uh, so I kind of ventured into landscape photography, and that's what I'm writing about is landscape photography and kind of finding my place with my camera out in the woods. So I've included a really quick uh short reading so i hesitate and just kind of a quick walk through i didn't even fix typos i just sat down and wrote this this is like uh i don't know a couple hundred words um so not not even a lot of writing anyway i put a few links out um how to write a memoir um and the original invite from npr's this i believe which came out 1954 i think or 59. anyway don't let this be intimidating just think about some moment in life, some experience that some has, has some meaning to you and that through that meaning to you might have meaning for your readers. Um, we can find our entry point into almost any story. So share that story with us. Share that moment with us. You can tell I'm still in school. There's the school bell. End of the day. Uh, so... Um, put something together. What I'm looking for by Thursday is for kind of a, a rough cut, you know, nothing polished. You don't have to share it either. Low pressure. You don't have to share this yet. All right. It's a rough cut. But on Thursday, I want you to be able to join a forum and talk about the process. Um, what is writing like for you? And what is specifically this piece of writing like for you? We won't... Uh, submit anything to share until next week and it'll be kind of a second round so you have a whole lot of time to work through it i know it's really uncomfortable to share really rough cuts of writing no one wants to be judged um, i even cleaned up some of my typos because i was afraid people would judge my typos uh, i'm struggling to type on a different keyboard here that's that's my challenge right now so anyway uh length you know and what it takes to tell the story, probably between a thousand and fifteen hundred words, but don't go counting words, you know, just kind of tell the story. Certainly, if you turn in two paragraphs, well, we need to have a conversation. Maybe you need a better story, but, uh, you know, it should be the kind of thing that you can come up with plenty to say. Okay, so that's the big thing. Um... Yeah, so we'll work with these in small groups or partners in week three, and we'll really jump in running um, next Monday with these. So you've got a lot of time to work on them. Please, um, please tell me spend the time, but also reach out if you get in a jam. I am sending you away writing, but I don't want to send you away to loneliness, isolation, frustration, and all kinds of bad things. So if you, after a day or two, are staring at a blank screen and just thinking, I have nothing, then post something to the questions forum. And uh, just a quick, hey, I need some help getting started. Anyone got anything going on? I may put up another forum just uh, so people kind of get a sense of what they're writing. You know, sometimes it's helpful in a group to hear what other people are writing about. Um, so we'll do that as well. My real strong advice, though, for um, for starting things like this is just to think about life and think about what you're doing and what you've done and those moments that have some meaning for you. And then tell that story. Tell it in a casual way. Think of your audience as just general people who are either going to hear this or they're going to pick it up in the back of a magazine and read it. Don't think of it like uh, term paper or research paper. That's not what this is. Think of it more as conversation. You know, when I think of moments of life, I think of everything from uh, fishing with my grandfather to um, being by his side shortly before he passed away. From uh, that crazy successful day in teaching when um kid gave me a best teacher ever sign that I keep up to those challenging moments, that specific moment when I was just out of my head as a teacher because I just couldn't work with this one student or couldn't 
get through this one block with this one student. I think about plenty of non-teaching moments from uh, being able to write about this one curve in the trail at Tuckerman Ravine on Mount Washington. I've climbed this, uh, I've climbed Mount Washington or parts of it like once a month for the last six months or so, even into January. And whenever I go up this one trail, I know this one curve because that's where my son and I stopped and turned around one time. And I can write about that moment that we turned around on Mount Washington and why we turned. I can also write about being on the summit with him and what that meant to see him go through the same thing I did to reach a goal like that. So think about families, lives, milestones, all those things, and find that story you want to tell that someone else can pull some kind of bigger idea from. If you get stuck or you want to run an idea by someone and don't really want to put it in the forum, just send me a uh, quick email or a personal message right through Brightspace, um, even a text or call, and I'm glad to help brainstorm ideas. I do that like all the time, and I, I really enjoy that. All right, so uh, let's jump in. Um, you'll, you saw the announcements forum has come to life. I'll put a few more announcements up as we go along. And uh, any questions at all, jump in, reach out. I'm in the process of responding to uh, last week's forum. Again, I fell behind, so my apologies, but uh, everything on my computer is gone, so I, I'm, I'm rebuilding many things right now. So I'll, I'll, I'll be in touch with everyone. Thanks again, and uh, stay cool, and we'll see you in there.